Okay, my name is Kevin. I work uh, at a German cybersecurity company, GData Advanced Analytics, and um, yeah, I'm also a maintainer of test containers. Some of you were in my workshop um, and author of the. So DevOps. What is DevOps? There are of course a lot of definitions of what DevOps is, but I think in general DevOps should include automation as a big part of DevOps. So. Yeah, in, in general, you want to automate the tasks that might be faulty or they could, uh, they could be error prone so that you have a defined way how you want to do it. And yeah, let, let's, let's imagine the, the example we saw in, uh, we've seen in the last talk. Manager calls, he wants some reports generated, some Excel generated. You will do it one time, maybe by using the groovy scripts. You will do it a second time, a third time by calling the script by hand, but then you think, okay, maybe I should simply mm, automate this because it will happen every day, so I want to run it every day, every night, whatever, some kind of uh, defined pattern. And uh, what tool can we use for this? Um, yeah, a basic example would be simply a cron job. So um, it's a well and true, truly tested, battle tested Unix tool or Linux tool. And the ops, ops guy will say, why, why do you need Groovy for this? You can simply do this with Bash, but Bash is not nice for everything. Or maybe you can, um, you can argue with them and they would say, okay, uh, Groovy is fine, we install Groovy or Java, just give us a script, we will run it with cron, and then the next developer will come and he will say, oh no, but I want Python or I want Groovy, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not, um, not really, really well fit for for any use case or, or not very flexible, it's a classic ops thing maybe. And um, in the end, if you have all these um, cron jobs running, deployed somewhere, uh, what's happening? Who keeps track of it? Okay, some people might use um, uh, infrastructure as code approaches and then the cron job running somewhere is maybe kind of an infrastructure or the software you have to deploy using something like Puppet or Ansible or whatever. But uh, I think we've all seen uh, companies or, or teams where it's this one machine <coughs> server somewhere in the closet running super critical cron jobs also someone created years ago and no one even remembers them. And yeah, it's, it's, you, you normally don't have a very visible or well-defined place to see the actual cron jobs you maybe have configured or are running. Yeah, so. What will we do about it or what can we do about it? We can basically use our CI system. Here is an example, GitLab and GitLab CI. Who knows um, GitLab? Okay, basically most. So it's, um, yeah, like I listed here, it's a, it's a full package basically. You have the Git repository, wiki, issue tracker, but also the CI, CD stuff, and that's what we will, um, we will look at here. Um, so, in general, the CI stuff, uh, that's how it works. You have to have, have the GitLab server, and then you have multiple GitLab runners registered uh, with the server. They can run, they can be on different servers. You can have multiple runners on the same server. Yeah, like here in theory, even on a laptop, whatever. And they will um, then pull the jobs and, and run them. And how do they run them? Um, their uh, GitLab or the GitLab runner has the concept of executors. In, uh, in a GitLab runner, you can configure different executors. For example, the shell executor will simply run it directly on your machine. Uh, the Docker executor is super nice. We will look into this. It will spawn a Docker container and will then run your job in the Docker container. Docker machine super nice. It will spawn a new Docker machine, meaning a VM with a given um, uh, Docker machine provider, and yeah, there's all kind of stuff that are going heavy into Kubernetes now, and it's nice. Yeah, and what will happen um, in case of the Docker executor? Um, the GitLab server will create a job to run, like for example, in classic CI, um, um, CI case, if you commit code, code, it will create this job there, the runner will pull it, and um, then spawn a new build container, and inside this container it's run. So why are we, I, am I talking about GitLab CI here in detail? Um, because what you can do there is basically use it for not CI stuff, but as a substitute for cron to run any kind of software you want. This is a uh, complete example about, um, of a GitLab CI 
job definition or pipeline definition. You, um, you have a pipeline with multiple stage and each stage can have multiple jobs. This is a very easy pipeline, it only has one stage and one job. And um, here you can define at the image part uh, in which kind of Docker image it shall run or which kind of Docker uh, container it shall spawn to run the actual scripts. And um, yeah, this, in this case it will run a Docker, spawn a Docker container containing Groovy and JVM and everything you will need. And then you can simply in there call your Groovy script to do whatever you want, basically. And um, I think we just look into how this, how this might look in practice. So I have a, a GitLab running here locally. Mm, I set it up with um, Docker Compose. It's a, yeah, we can go in detail, but it's basically really, really easy to also set up your whole GitLab system with Docker Compose. And yeah, it's running here. And uh, I have created here an example repository. Let's just load it. It's loading, yes. There is not a lot in here. There is a CI file and the actual job, uh, Ruby job. We first look into the CI file. And we see it's nearly as simple as the, uh, as the one I've shown on the slides. So we have first a first stage that will just run my GUI script. And then I have a second uh, stage, it's a special GitLab pa uh, page, it's called Pages, and um, it will then publish a uh, an static website, basically it's like uh, GitHub pages for those of you who know this. And um, then the actual script, just a funny example, um, it's, it will um, query the, um, <coughs> the uh, uh, GitHub API, the public GitHub API, it will search for projects using test containers basically, um, it returns JSON, it will then parse a JSON. Uh, then I use here the HTML markup builder. I'm not entirely sure if I use it perfectly, there might be better ways to use it. But I basically use it to generate a static HTML file, write it out to a file, and boom, that's it. And then it's hosted on GitHub and reachable here, and you can look at it here. So, yeah, so, so far. Um, it would only trigger the build and update the page if someone would check in something. But also now in GitLab you have this nice feature called Scheduled Jobs. Whoop. It's here. You can uh, basically con configure a cron expression for your job. Like here, to do whatever you want. What you would do with, with cron maybe. And, um, we can also manually trigger a build, and I'll just do this. Now we look into the pipeline. A new build pipeline has been created. It contains these two stages with two jobs. It will first spawn this Groovy container with a Groovy script, just doing it there. And it's all running now locally on my laptop which is kind of nice, maybe. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it uh, created the HTML. The HTML, uh, the HTML file, okay. this was is then published as an artifact. You can use artifacts in GitLab to share files between stages and between jobs. And then the uh, next stage <coughs> will start deploy with pages. And yeah, it fetched the artifact and then just moves the HTML file into the specific GitLab pages folder and if we update this now I hope the yeah so we see the time <coughs> updated and yeah you can you can do anything you want with this Groovy script of course you all know how, how flexible and powerful it is and um, even the simple example if I would I could have of course done something similar with bash but it's not that convenient and here you are <coughs> like super uh, free to use whatever technology you want as long as you can run it in a Docker container. Here, I think that's basically it. Thank you. Are there any questions?
no questions, then just thank you. <laughs>